10% of jobs are to disappear in the next 20 years. Robots to replace humans. Automation and digitization are changing what we do and threatening many professional roles. But in the new book, Don't Worry About the Robots, authors Dr. Joe Cribb and David Glover assure us that it's not all doom and gloom. Joe joins us now to tell us more about it. Morning, Joe. Morning, morning. Here to put our minds at rest. First off, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. So I had one of these um, big exec jobs and a couple of years ago um, when my contract came to an end and I was offered another one I said uh, no thanks and so um, I decided that I'd quite like some flexibility I've got two young kids and I hadn't seen them for a while so it'd be quite nice to create my own job so I did and in the process I had a lot of people come up to me uh, a whole group of people were going are you mad <laughs> you gave away a car park <laughs> Crazy um, woman. But also an awful lot of people that were really curious, like how are you going to make a job? How are you going to make a living? How, and really what they were asking is how can I have a job that is more satisfying or, um, or a bit more flexible? So out of that came the book. We have a fabulous uh, publisher and they said, yeah, there's something in there where, you know, New Zealanders are really thinking about work or perhaps we need to be thinking about work because those robots are coming. So that's how we ended up with a book. With a robot on it. And, <laughs> what, you know, can you sum up the book? What does it cover? So basically, um, the beginning of it, what we're trying to do is make what's happening in automation really accessible because there's a whole lot of stuff that's got huge big words and I don't know about you, but I'm just trying to get uh, the washing done, make sure the kids have got undies and lunch, you know? And so to think about automation, um, and what is happening around AI. So we try and make it as accessible as we can. And then we say, hey, what does this actually mean for you? And you know, some of the statistics are pretty grim. You know, up to half of us could lose our jobs if some of the futurists are right, and it could happen in the next five to 10 years. Mm. So rather than thinking crikey, uh, or ignoring it, we asked a whole lot of people who are working in this area who understand what's happening around uh, the future and at the, uh, kind of at the future of their industries and said, how are you preparing? Tell us your secrets. What are you doing to make sure that you can pay the mortgage in 10 years time? And that's the bulk of the book. It's really practical stuff going, hey, how do we manage what might be coming at us and how do we get ahead of it? Because it's not just um, you think about somebody in a factory putting parts into no. little bits of, into other small parts. You think about DVD shops. Yes. They don't exist anymore, do they? No. That's and right. they did five years ago. Uh, you point out though in the book, um, robots, are able to work 24 yes. hours a day, seven days yes. a week. Um, they don't need breaks, they, they don't, don't need get toilet cold. stops, they don't get cold, yeah. they don't have a child sick that they need exactly. to go and look after. How important do you think it is to still have that human connection to achieve business success. Is well, it important? Well, there's a lot of things that robots can do, whether we like it or not, they can do it better than us. And actually, why don't we embrace that and go, actually, there's a whole lot of boring and dangerous jobs. And there's a whole lot of things that probably, even when we think about our day-to-day -day job, there's a whole lot of stuff we could just get rid of, couldn't we? Um, and so I think robots are gonna do that. It's the jobs that are really easy to um, automate are the ones that kind of are repetitive. So they're over and over and over again. But there's a whole lot of things that robots will never be able to do potentially or will take thousands and thousands of years to do it. I mean, they're still debating that. But robots don't love, they don't, you know, they don't have any emotion. Um, we were talking about when we were in the um, green room, the, a, a robot's going to struggle to do my mascara properly. Do you know there's a whole creativeness? <laughs> yeah, Actually, true. I think they were struggling to do my mascara properly as well. <laughs> um, that was not their skills, it's my eyelashes. Um, that there's a whole lot of things around creativity and empathy and that human contact that robots will never do. So there is a, this isn't the end of humanity, but we could leave some people behind if we don't think about it. But humans are very adaptable yes. though, aren't we? Yes. So I guess this is preparing us for the inevitable because yes. we, we overestimate the short term we and do. we underestimate we the long term, we do. don't we? Um, we are also, I know this is very uh, grim, but we're also really good at creating misery too and inequality. I know that's a bit profound, but that's what we don't want to happen. We want everybody to be able to be part of this, which means, yes, probably the government and a whole lot of people have to do things, but actually we have to do as well. How are we going to be relevant? What do we want to be doing? Have we got skills or are we, are we in a job that's likely to be automated? Are there particular jobs that are going to be automated? Yes, they're, they're pretty easy to predict. So anything that's got sort of low level, say, data analysis or if you're processing something that can be done and you're doing the same thing over and over again, they're really easy to automate. And actually that's quite a lot 
lot of our jobs, isn't it? Is that us? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, we're in a studio. We're next door. The cameras are robotic. Yes. And I guess in everyday life, we yes. are seeing, you know, automation. Yes. But there's always still a human touch somewhere along the line. Potentially. And what you're saying is we need to harness that, harness our yep. skills yep. and apply it to the modern world. But also make sure that we've got the, the right skills. So if we're really awesome at doing an automated, a process that could be automated, maybe we need to think about what else we could do so that we do stay relevant, so that we're one step ahead. What, what should we be telling our grandchildren or our children? Yeah, well, I think that you should tell them to read our book. Right. You know I had to say that. It's a bit cheesy. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Read like, our book. Like, like, no, it's a fascinating no. subject. Um, it. Yeah. But one of the things that we uh, think we should stop doing is we often ask our kids or our grandkids, or even when we're seeing young people around us, we go, what do you want to be when you grow up? And we're asking them to give us a name of a job, right? I want to be a... Imagine if they said, I wanted 10 years' time. They said, I want to work in a music shop. Well... Do you know what I mean? We've, no. We're forcing them into a really narrow uh, decision point. And actually what we should be saying is, what skills do you want to develop? Like, do you want to really work with people? Or do you want to do complex problem solving? Or do you want to uh, be a communicator? And ask them to, f and encourage them to focus on what skills they've got rather than a specific job, because that job may Might disappear yeah. really quickly. Yeah. Sound advice, Joe. Oh, Thanks yes. so much. A lot of great information that Thanks. book too. Thank you. Thanks. Don't Worry About the Robots is available now from all great bookstores. Yes, one everybody should read. Okay, there's still hope for us though, Mel. We're not going to get replaced. <laughs>